hello guys hello my youtube family welcome or welcome back to my channel god bless you and i trust that by the grace of god we are all doing fine i hope i hope it's not too late to wish you a happy and prosperous a year full of the grace of god the sufficient grace of god where you are weak the bible says god's sufficient grace is i mean god's grace is sufficient even in your weakness so where you are weak you ask god to grace you to give you strength to give you wisdom to press forward in this life so i want to welcome you i hope it's not too late and the year has just begun so it is a new level every time we enter a new year we enter a new age it is another chapter that, that has been unlocked so let us go in with the wisdom of God. Let us go in with the grace of God. Do not enter a level without the knowledge of how to function in that level. A new physically nothing has happened. Like it is just a change of time. It was 11:59 then it became 12 and now it is January 1st. What happened? Nothing physically happened, but in the realm of the spirit you have entered another year. You have entered another dimension another level of life you must go there prepared you must know what you want from that year because yesterday can never come back yesterday is gone it can never come back and today is the only time you have my friend used to tell me this that now is the only time you have now is the only time you have what do you do with your now what you do with your now can affect your tomorrow and it can correct actually what is in the past maybe past shame what you do now can correct it so i just want to welcome you it is not too late i know january has passed and now people maybe some of you have written your your new year's resolution and it feels like nothing has happened you have accomplished absolutely nothing and i just want to tell you that the year has just begun gear up the year has just begun so today I want to talk about five practical ways on how you can on how you can draw close to God on, on how you can actually have an intimate relationship with God. The Bible says a rich fellowship with God. So there is a poor fellowship with God and there is a rich fellowship with God, having a rich fellowship with God whereby God begins to show off through you. This year God wants to show off through you god wants to reveal his glory to the world through you through the way you dress through the way you talk through the way you walk let somebody look at you and be like what tribe is that person like she is not of this world she does not even function because these days somebody can know you by the way you walk somebody can know you by the way you talk by the way your culture has taught you some things someone can just know you that one is a is a so and so is from this clan but let them say, who is that person? What is his or her secret to success? I want to know it. So that when they come to you, you are able to point them back to Christ. That it is Christ who made me who I am. So today I just want us to learn. the. F I know there are other, other ways you can get close to God. But I want to focus on these five practical ways you can draw to closer to God. Because it worked for me. Actually, this January, I was thinking of changing my prayer routine and, you know, implementing something else. And I just didn't find other ways because these practical ways that I implemented in my spiritual life, these routines that I have been doing have worked for me. I have seen the hand of God. So I will make a video about uh, my testimonies to encourage you, to give you, you know, to steer up your faith. The Bible says we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimonies that means you cannot actually talk me out of the god i encountered by the word of our testimonies i have seen the hand of god i have tested of the goodness of the lord devil you cannot come and tell me this and this i have seen i have experienced that is what it means by the word of our testimonies. That means the word of our testimonies. It, it is, it's actually translated the our encounter. You cannot talk us out of our encounter with the Lord. 
So praise the Lord. It is good to encounter God. It is good to testify of the goodness of God, of the hand of God. And you know, sharing testimony, it tears up faith. It tears up faith in the hearts of believers. So I will share my testimonies. But today, let us go into the five practical ways you can draw closer to God. You can, you know, have intimate relationship with the Lord. And number one, number one, go back to your first love. Get go back to the cross what do i mean by that i mean jesus is the love of your soul jesus is your first love i'll give you an example of the prodigal son the father gave him his share he left home but every day the father comes out to look if his son has come the father still had hope his son would return and when he came he did not treat him to to him he came because he has finished his share. He, he, he was willing to come in and, you know, work for his father as long as he would eat and have shelter. But the father welcomed him as my son. That is our relationship with God. Every day he looks out for you, waiting for you. Praise the Lord. It does not matter how far, how far gone you have gone. God still waits for you. He still looks in the streets to see if you have come back home or if you are on the way to your home in order to help you. Helping you is gracing you, giving you the strength, pulling you from the world into his kingdom. So go back to your first love. Go back to the cross. Our God is a holy God. You may say, yes, I pray. I read my Bible. I go to church. I tithe. I do all these other things that please the Lord. But remember, our God is a holy God. So if you're to return to him, forsake the things of this world. Leave behind the things of this world and come to him. Come to him in holiness. Because when you come to him, righteousness is your portion. Children of God, you don't earn righteousness. You are righteous. As long as you are for God. You are in right standing with the Lord. The word righteous means in right standing with the Lord. So you, you don't have to work for it. If you understand that the Lord loves you, you, you don't have to work for his love. You don't have to, 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 to gain his love. But you work out of his love. You know he loves you. That's why you're doing it. The Bible says in all things that you do, do it unto the Lord. That thing changed my perspective, by the way in the things I work for, in, in my love for people. I know I am not doing it for anyone, but for God. Even if I am doing it to, to, to you know, satisfy people, like I cook food to satisfy people. In actual sense, I'm doing it for the Lord. I am working. I'm, I'm not working for my boss. I am doing it unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. So returning back to the cross means forsaking the things of this world. Repent. There is a difference between asking for forgiveness and repentance. Asking for, for forgiveness means you want God to pardon you of your sin. Repenting means turning away from that thing. Turning your back to that thing. And saying, I am pressing forward to the Lord. Return to the cross. The Bible says, carry your cross daily and follow Jesus Christ. That means choose daily to deny your flesh. And to be led by the Holy Spirit. That is the, the meaning of the scripture. Praise the Lord. So return to Jesus. That is number one. Return to Jesus. Return to your first love. Choose. God has given us choice. In everything you do, it is a choice. There are consequences of choice and there are blessings of choice. So in whatever you do in this Christianity, there are no laws. We are simply led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we are not under law but the grace of God. So we are, we are reliant on the Holy Spirit alone. We don't have rules to, to, to follow in order to get close to God. Choose. Choose this day who you will follow. Choose this day who, who you will love. The word choose. The choice is up to you. Praise the Lord. So it is up to you to say, Lord, today I surrender all to you. I give it all to you. I choose you. You are Lord. The word Lord means governor over your life. So the government of God has laws, which is the word of God. 
to follow the word of God and to be led by the Holy Spirit. That is the government of God. Choose this day who you will serve. Choose this day who your master is. Praise the Lord. So that is number one. Number two, have a spiritual routine. Have a routine. There is this saying that goes, um, your success is found in your routine. And it is so true. Just as you have your morning routine, your work routine, your evening routine, have a spiritual life routine. Have intimacy routine with God. I will just share with you my routine with the Lord. I'm not asking you to follow the routine that I do because we are at different levels with God. God functions with us based on our faith, the level of our faith with him, the level of our knowledge with him. So personally, I, I um, where do I start from? Monthly. I have a daily routine, a monthly routine, a weekly routine, a yearly routine to reach my year goals. Praise the Lord. So spiritually, every Friday is an overnight day. Every Friday is an overnight day. Um, every beginning of the month, the first three days, the first three days of the month, it's a fasting period. Sometimes it is Esther fasting dry. Other times it is one week fasting from six to six. How God leads me. But I know he knows. By now he knows every beginning of the month. It is my time with him. It is my fasting period with him. Praise the Lord. And every single day there is a specific time. When the time comes, it is my time with the Lord. Nobody else. It is my time with the Lord. So have a routine that works for you. A daily routine. A weekly routine. A monthly routine to reach your yearly goals. Now, for example, I have a goal to read the Bible twice. The whole Bible twice this year. And in order to achieve that goal, I need to break it down. I need to calculate how do I need to read daily and meditate, not just reading as though I am reading a newspaper, but to meditate upon it, you know, for the word to sink deep in my heart. Have you ever been in a situation where you are so sad and then you, <laughs> you sit down and the word of God just begins to, to, to speak to you? Scriptures just begin to come. That is what you have input in you. The Bible says the truth, no, and you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now it means, and you will know the truth and the truth that you know shall set so you free. Number three is pray. Pray and read the word of God. Those two go hand in hand because it's like actually breathing in and breathing out. You cannot say which one is so important. Is breathing in more important than breathing out? You get. So praying is like breathing in and breathing out. And the word of God, they go hand in hand. When you know little about God, you don't have much to say in prayer, especially in worship. You have to know who you're worshiping. You have to know your creator. Just like their, their, their world histories, if you go into, you know, a certain place or you are married to this clan you have to actually learn about their culture you have to learn about their things that is the same with you cannot come into christianity and you know begin to worship who are you worshiping who are you worshiping you have to know who you worship so learn to read the bible even if you don't understand what you're reading read it even if trust me there are certain times where I read and I don't understand. I say, Holy Spirit, teach me this thing. And I don't understand. But God, remember, God is intentional about us. In everything he does, he is intentional. Even in the waiting, when you pray and wait and things don't work, he is intentional. It is protection. It is guidance. It is for your growth. He is intentional about everything that we do. So maybe... You have read, you know, certain times and I mean, some time back you have read the Bible and you didn't understand. And then you say, mm -mm, I'm, I'm not going back to that thing. That is just a storybook. I have read and I didn't understand. But there are certain situations that, you know, happen to you. And then you'll be like, oh, oh, I read that in the Bible. Oh, you see that? Oh, <laughs> praise the Lord. So 
you you will understand it in the future read if, if even if you don't understand it read read the word of god meditate upon it meditating upon it even even as you are you are going by your day meditate upon the word of god there was a time i was meditating on that scripture that says carry your cross daily it's in the book of luke and i was like what does it mean to really carry my cross daily no it was somebody that actually came to me and said well, what does it mean to carry my cross daily to pick up my cross and you know carry it daily as i was meditating upon it the lord said choosing to crucify your flesh so it is in meditating that god begins to actually speak to you you begin to hear that voice that you use in your heart to talk and to to to, to reason god uses it the most god uses your voice to talk to you the most so learn to discern praise the lord pray pray it is one thing to read the bible and it's another thing to pray prayer gives you power to withstand the the shenanigans of the devil to withstand trials and temptations it empowers you and it weakens the flesh when you pray even if it's like 15 minutes or 20 minutes you you are never the same again when you come out of your prayer room know that you are not the same again something has happened there was a transaction between heaven and earth praise the lord so read and pray your life depends on it don't miss a day the word daily choose to carry your cross daily pick up your cross daily and follow god pick up your cross daily and follow god that means every single day every there are no rest days like sunday i'm not doing it monday i'm not tuesday no every single day it may be hard it may be hard in the first in the beginning your flesh will fight you your flesh will begin to tell you ah uh -uh, first go and eat you you have you have plenty of time to do this thing so you'll be like oh i'm uh, i'm really hungry let me go and eat fast and when you're full you, you want to sleep you want to rest like let the food digest after that you know you're gone praise the lord choose to crucify the flesh don't feed it what it should you know don't feed the flesh watching tv endless scrolling and all that deny it that is to crucify it deny it it is painful sacrifice is painful sometimes i know some of you have done fasting and you have reached a level where it is too hard it is too hard you cannot do it anymore and you ask yourself god help me it is too hard but that is the time you're supposed to press on because the devil is going to use that against you when when you are rebuking him he'll be like this one this one who we sent temptation and she just fell in it far like that this one who we just whispered in her ears to to go and steal and just give himself to stealing you know what the devil will use you and then mock you the devil will use you and then use that that your weakness that weakness that temptation you fell into to mock you the devil is a liar choose to pray put your body under subjection every day pray and i know it is not by might nor by power but by the spirit of god he's the one that gives us strength to pray grace to pray so number four is quite similar to number three which is feelings aren't reliable the word of god is feelings aren't reliable the word of god is be led by the spirit of the lord not by your feelings the bible says the heart is deceitful many times the heart has led us to destruction don't think with your heart think with your mind the bible says god has placed his word above himself that means god honors his word god is faithful to his word the word of god is our standard you cannot stand out without a standard you need a standard to stand out and the word of god is our standard as christians so 
even if your heart tells you this go back to the word of god what does the word of god say about that situation maybe you are bitter in your in your heart you feel like revenging what does the word of god says he's god of vengeance go to him to fight for you you are not supposed to fight for anything i have learned you know in 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 2021 yes 2021 in 2021 i was this kind of person who carried everything upon myself it is upon myself too you know i have put myself on so much pressure to accomplish at a young age some things then after fellowship with god after you know real after some time with the lord i have realized that actually the lord doesn't want me to carry all these burdens upon myself he wants me to cast it out to him because he cares for me after realizing that i became at peace because lord whatever happens to me my life is in your hands so feelings aren't reliable rely on the word of god when you feel a certain way what does the word of god say concerning that situation praise the lord and then act on that word of god instead of your feelings and lastly fellowship with brethren join gatherings join prayer meetings fellowship with brethren there is this power of coming together to pray together the bible says when peter was thrown into prison that church gathered and prayed for him that church gathered there is that power in union there's that power of coming together to just fellowship sometimes you ask yourself why is it that when i when when i'm alone i don't pray for as much time as when i'm in church i pray that is the power of prayer there is impartation that goes on revelation this you know the, the spirit of god is just moving hovering we are at different levels in life we are at different you know grace in life i should say and coming together you know to combine all the forces that's why the bible says the gates of hell cannot prevail against their church there is power in union make it upon yourself to join a gathering to to join a church to join a prayer gathering and commit to fellowshipping together i'm not saying you should cancel your personal time with the lord that one is also important but have time to fellowship with the brethren praise the lord so these are the five ways and i know there are other ways you can you can you know draw close to the lord but these are five practical ways that i myself i have implemented upon my life and i have, I have seen great change just last year i have seen great change in my life and i pray I pray that you don't just listen to it. I, I, I pray that you, you also apply it in your life. Where it says develop a routine. Sit down with yourself and say, Okay, I am, I am maybe a lawyer. I am a farmer. I am a, a teacher. This is my life. Now, how do I you know, spend time with the Lord? How do I develop a routine? What time do I spend most on TV? What what time do I need to spare for God that when the time comes, it is me and the Lord, no one else. Praise the Lord. So I pray it helps you. I pray that you become a doer of the word and not just a, a listener or a hearer. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. And if you're looking for an online gathering where you want to fellowship with the brethren, we have a, a channel on Telegram where we fellowship every Wednesday and every Thursday. I mean, every Wednesday and every Saturday. We pray together. We share the word of God. We, you know, where where the where where it pleases the Spirit, He moves and prophesies and heals. Praise the Lord. So I want you to join us in this fellowship, and your life will not remain the same. God bless you. Please share this video to to help others also practice their lives and subscribe and like. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. I will see you in my next video. Shalom.